Okay, now we're going to go back to solving linear ordinary differential equations using the Laplace transform technique. And this is ideally suited with ordinary differential equations where the coefficients are constant. So here we're given, as you recall, our ordinary differential equations with initial conditions shown here. And the idea of solving this linear ordinary differential equation is as follows. The Laplace transform of a linear differential equation with constant coefficients becomes an algebraic equation of y of s. Where we note that the Laplace transform of y of t is y of s, the Laplace transform of the first derivative is s times y of s minus y0, where y0 is the initial condition of y of t, evaluated at t equals 0. And then the Laplace transform of the second derivative of y of t is equal to s of squared y of s minus y0 minus y1, which are related to our initial conditions shown here. Now let's summarize the procedure and how we apply the Laplace transform as well as the inverse Laplace transform in finding y of t. That satisfies the differential equation as well as the initial condition. First, we apply the last plus transform to our differential equation. And then we take this transform differential equation, which now becomes an algebraic equation in y of s. Now we take this expression described in the Laplace domain, and we solve this transform equation y of s. Once we solve for y of s, we t apply the inverse Laplace transform to find the solution of our original initial value problem. Once we have that, then we can see that we found y of t that satisfies both the differential equation as well as the initial condition. So we both apply the Laplace and inverse Laplace transform in order to find the y of t. And now we're going to illustrate it, this procedure with a couple of an examples. Now let's solve the following first order initial value problem. Here we're given dy dt plus 3y equals 13 sine of 2t, where y of 0 is equal to 6, our initial condition. Therefore, we'll take the Laplace transform of each term of this differential equation, dy dt. Here we just have a constant, so we can factor that out. And now we have y of t is equal to 13 Laplace transform of sine of 2t. Now we note that the Laplace transform of dy of dt is just equal to s y of s minus y of 0, which is equal to 6 in this case, plus 3y of s is equal to 13, and the Laplace transform of sine 2t is just 2 over s squared plus 2 squared. And I'll simplify this as 26 over s squared plus 4. Now we see we have y of s in a couple terms here, so we'll factor that out. y of s, we have an s term and a plus 3 term. We'll put y of 0 on the other side, so we have 26 over s squared plus 4 plus y of 0, which is just equal to 6. Well, this implies that y of s is simply equal to 26 all over s plus 3 s squared plus 4 plus 6 over s plus 3. Now we can take this expression and apply partial fraction expansion. Now I rewrote this expression in here for y of s and the result of this using algebra is 6 s squared plus 50 divided by s plus 3 over s squared plus 4, in which I put these two terms here and the common denominator. And 
for the second term here, s6 over s plus 3, I multiplied by s squared plus 4 in the numerator and denominator. And now I can combine these two terms over a common denominator. That leaves 6s squared, and then 6 times 4 is 24, plus 26 yields 50. Now since the quadratic por formula s squared plus 4 does not have a factor, using real numbers we can assume that the numerator in the partial fraction decomposition is a linear polynomial in s. That is 6x squared plus 50 divided by s plus 3 over s squared plus 4 is equal to a over s plus 3 plus bs plus c all over s squared plus 4. Because we could see that if we note the pattern before, it's going to co consist of, we're assuming here, a combination of sines and cosines. Now we can put the right hand side of the equality over a common denominator, and equating numerators gives 6s squared plus 50 equals a s squared plus 4 plus b s plus c s plus 3. Now when we set s equal to minus 3, we see that this expression goes to 0. And then when we substitute for minus 3, we get 6 times minus 3 squared plus 50, and that's equal to 104. 50 plus 54 is equal to a, substituting minus 3, this is 9, or 13. This implies that a is equal to 8 for that expression here. That's our coefficient or residue associated with the root 3. Now we don't have any more real zeros, so we have to evaluate these expressions here. So we, for the s squared coefficients, we have 6. And on the right side, we got a s squared. And we also have b s squared. So a plus b is equal to 6. But we already found a to be 8, which implies that b is equal to negative 2. Then finally, we have our s terms such that we can evaluate it as 0, since there's no s terms on the left side. We have 3b for here plus c is equal to 0 for this. But we know that b is minus 2, which implies that c is equal to 6. So now, ys can be written as 8 over s plus 3 plus b, which is minus 2s, all over s squared plus 2 squared plus c, which is 6, over s squared plus 2 squared. And using our Laplace transform, our inverse Laplace transform, we can see that y of s yields, now for this first term, 8 e s to the th over s plus 3 is 8 e to the minus 3t, so plus negative 2 over cosine of 2t plus, we can take this 6 and we can say that's just 3 times 2, so now we can say that it's 3 sine of 2t. So this is our y of t, and I'll highlight that.
So we see how the Laplace transform is used to solve ordinary differential equations with constant coefficients.